Hello, ladies and gentlemen that live inside of the internet. My name is John, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how you can improve the code quality within your NPM powered projects. Now, in this video, I'm going to teach you about a tool called Embold. Now, Embold is a static code analyzer. And what this means is that by hooking up Embold with your GitHub or your GitLab, whenever you do a push to a branch, it's going to trigger a quality build. And this is called a quality gate. And what happens is Embold will do a scan of your code up to five times a day. And then it's going to tell you if your code is, well, decent, or it's going to tell you if your code absolutely sucks. Now, the good thing about Embold is that if you're doing hobby projects or small projects, it's absolutely free to use. So it's not going to cost you anything. Now, this video is probably going to take about five or six minutes. And I reckon that installing this is going to have a dramatic improvement in your code quality. That sounds super awesome, right? So let's get on with it. Now, obviously, this is a YouTube video and my name is John. I do weekly YouTube videos on web development, productivity, all that amazing stuff. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, hit that subscribe button now. Don't be a numpty, hit subscribe, otherwise you might lose me forever. And you probably wouldn't care in the slightest. Anyway, assuming you've done that, let's look at Embold and talk about its pricing model. We have magically been transported over to the Embold website. And if you want to enable static code analysis within your projects, simply head over to embold.io. Now, because Embold is premium, there is a price hike at a certain level. And I think it's really important to understand where the price hikes are before you invest time and energy into a product, because there's nothing worse than getting an unexpected bill. And that makes me very, very grumpy. So as you can see on the free plan right here, as long as your repository is in GitHub and it's open to the public, you're going to get 1 million lines of code coverage scanning for absolutely free, no charge. If you have a private repo, you're only going to get 20,000 K. So basically, if you've got a private repository, you need to remember to exclude your node modules folder. Otherwise, your 20,000 lines is just going to go like that. Now, I think for most projects that I work on, the free plan seems to do it. Now, if you do go over the private repo limit, the price hike is five pounds a month. So it's not going to break the bank and you'll get 20 scans a day. And then after that, it's an extra five pounds for every 50,000 lines of code. So again, it's not too bad. This is definitely centered for small projects. So if you're working with one or two people, you've got a hobby project, or you're just building some more like brochureware websites or small applications, this is going to do perfectly to improve the quality within your solution. It is now time to set up a quality gate on a project that I've created previously. So I'm going to sign in at the top button right here. And this is all point and click. So quickly sign in. Now I can sign in using my GitHub account. So I suggest you do the same. I'm already logged into my GitHub. So all I need to do is click on the big sign in with GitHub button. Now I'm going to authorize and bold and off it goes going to sell my soul to the devil by agreeing to some terms and services that I'm never going to bother reading because I don't have time. And then boom, here you go. We have now got a organization. So I'm going to add in my GitHub repo and that's called a John D. Jones POC. I'm going to install in bold within my GitHub. I'm going to go for the free plan. Thank you very much. Click get started. And then that's pretty much all we need to do. So in the next step here, I should be able to pick the project that I want to start scanning. So let's go for this Zeus POC that I'm just been currently creating. Now, you might not be able to see this. So if I scroll right down to the bottom, there's a lot of stuff in my repo. You can see I've got this add repository to embold. Simply clicking on that is going to add my repository. And as you can see, we've now got this scanning. And basically, Embold is going to go off and it's going to give me a report on how good or how bad my code repository is. Now, after the scan completes, you'll be reducted to this repository page. Now, the first thing you'll see is an overall ranking. Now, because I've only got one repository hooked up, this ranking is a little bit skewed because it's basically the ranking of my single repo. But as you can see, I've got a 4.9. So 4.9 out of 5 is pretty good. So I think if you're writing code and you're using bold, aim to get somewhere in the 4 mark and consider yourself, you know, really in a good place. So 
So scrolling down the page a little bit, you can see that I can have a look at my repository. Clicking on it will allow me to drill into the details. So I get this nice report saying that there's no duplication. It looks good. You can see that we've got no uh, anti-patterns, which is also nice. And you can see that the KPI statistical summary is also pretty good. So we've got good security, analyzability, robustness, portability, functionality, efficiency, all of that stuff is ranking pretty high. Now we do have a few code issues, unfortunately. So clicking on this will give me a report of all the code smells within my project that needs tidying up. So as you can see, it's giving me some errors that I've got some double quotes and I've got some unused variables within my project. Now, one thing that I like about this um, report is that we can filter out. So obviously in a really big project, if you do have hundreds of errors, it's really good to filter them by like severe errors first. So this means you or your team can tackle the really important ones because sometimes, you know, we just don't have enough time to filter everything. Now, as you can see at the top, this scan was performed against the master branch. And when we're using Git and we're working in teams, it's very likely that you're going to be working with multiple environments. So this is really important because if you want to do pull requests before someone is allowed to merge their code within to the master branch, you can make sure it goes through in bold and make sure that it passes your quality gates. And this is super important. So as you can see, this dashboard is really, really nice. It's really simple to set up in bold. There is some configuration. As I said, we do need to exclude our node modules folder. So let's see how we can do that within our project right now. By default, Embold will scan all of the files within your repository. However, in many circumstances, you will not want this to happen. For example, you won't want it to scan your public folder. You won't want it to scan your node modules folder or maybe your .git folder. So you can determine which files it will scan using a embold.yaml file. So to create this file is super simple. In the root of your directory, just do embold.yaml. Then we want to do version one at the top. And then we just do a sources with an S, then an exclusions with an S. And then we can add in our exclusion. So we can do a slash public. We can do a slash node modules. We can even do a dot git folder. We can go wild because there really is no restrictions. And then after we have this file, all you need to do is commit it in source control, push it into your branch, and then within um, Embold, just re-trigger a scan, and then it will exclude those from the results. Super simple, really easy to configure. I recommend that you go out and install this on your project today. Do it. That really is everything you need to do to enable a static code analyzer within your project. And personally, it still blows my mind a little bit about how simple it is and also that it's free. Now I've come from a C-sharp background and maybe 15 years ago, a tool like this would take days and days to install and it would cost loads of money. Now it just takes like a few minutes, click a few buttons, boom, job done. And to tell you what, out of all the projects and all the tools I've used, I can guarantee you that using a static code analyzer is pretty much one of the best ways to guarantee and improve the quality of your code base. Simply installing it and then looking at that report every single day, making small refactorings, making sure that people can't check stuff into branches unless it's past a quality gate is going to boost the quality of your code base no end. And after all, probably the reason why you're watching this and the same reason why I'm recording this is we're all software craftspeople. We all want to create beautiful software and this tool will help you. So I recommend give it a try. Also, let me know what you think about this tool below. Really interested to hear your thoughts as always. Also, if you have any recommendations, would love to hear them. Now we've got to that stage of the video where I need to sell myself a little bit. So if you haven't already, absolutely smash that subscribe button because I would absolutely appreciate it. Very easy to lose content on YouTube. So hit subscribe now and be a legend. Also, if you want to trick me, um, YouTube into sharing my video to more people, please hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video because it actually just helps the algorithm show my video to more people. So I very much appreciate it. I also do a Sunday newsletter where I just send out interesting things I've learned on the week about tech news, programming news, tutorials. So if you want to get some free uh, career guide, free software guide, 
just go to the link below, sign up to my newsletter. It's free, you won't get spammed. Give it a try. Anyway, I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are in the world and happy coding.